What's happening YouTube? Thanks for stopping back by the channel today right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So I do apologize this week I have not come out with a Nifty Tools of the Week video. You know, life happens. We got stuff going on, uh, kids have games, and Captain Ron, which you guys need to follow him if you haven't already, he graduated this week. So big shout out to him. Congratulations for graduating through the Mopar CAT program. And big boy's gonna be starting in on a flat rate here in the shop this next week. So make sure you guys go over, hit his channel and uh, congratulate him. Make sure you give him a big pat on the back for that one. Uh, so if you haven't been following a couple of the other channels, Mr. JRC54 uh, has been doing a make your own tool challenge. He challenged me this last week and we are going to be getting into doing a homemade tool here that's kind of going to replicate another one that I had seen on the truck but didn't want to pay that much money for it. So we're going to be getting into this one. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. So the tool that I'm going to be kind of replicating here is going to be these uh, kind of like the snap on wire insertion tool, but it's going to be my own kind of little twist on that one. Here at the dealership we put a lot of things um, in the dashes of these vehicles, they're called pastimes, they're for um, buy here pay here lots and things like that. So we have to run wires from the dash out to the starter on almost a daily basis. So we're gonna be making our own wire insertion tool. The snap-on version, so if you have a look at that one, I've got the link to that one down in the description below. It's got one handle and they have four different rods. Threads into the handle and it's got different lengths, a couple of different sizes for how many wires or the different gauges of wire that you wanna get put through the dash. Uh, it's mainly made for putting a hole in through a couple of boots or helping to thread it in through some holes, something like that. So what we've got here is a couple of snap-on handles that I picked up. Yeah, I know they didn't have to be snap-on handles, but you know what? I've worked with them for a couple of other projects and I like them. They match everything else I have. So we picked up two of them, two different sizes. We're going to be drilling them out anyways. So. And the one that I picked up first is going to be part number SGD155C. It was a battery uh, marine terminal tool, something like that. So we got that one and then we just picked up a standard quarter inch SGD4B handle as well. So what we're going to be doing, we've got ourselves a piece of 3 8 outside diameter T304 stainless steel tubing. Uh, I picked that one up off of Amazon. I'll have the link for everything down in the description below. We're going to be cutting this one down, uh, maybe making a couple of different changes to it and seeing what we can do to get our own wire insertion tool. Give you guys a little bit of a close up here. This is going to be the stainless steel that we're working with. 3 8 outside diameter. Um, tubing, stainless steel, and then the handle, the first one that we're going to be working with, as you can see, get it to focus here, maybe, there we go, this is that handle right there. Now the good thing about this one is that the handle right here is already got a hole in it and it already happens to be 3 8 diameter. So this is the one that we got out of it. It's just a little short, stubby, flat head from the marine terminals. So now what we're gonna be doing is taking our 3 8 drill bit, drilling it on down through the rest of the handle. And as you can see here, it fits pretty nice and snug right into the handle as that size is. So let's get to uh, drilling this one out and we're gonna see how we can get this one fit right. Just like so. 
Now we've got it flipped over and here on the back side where uh, the bit had come through, we're gonna do just a little bit of a bevel. So we've got a bigger uh, bit here with 135 degree angle. So just a slight bevel to it. There we go. A Little bit of a bevel just so it kind of angles down into what we really wanted. So now we are gonna get our tube and we're gonna start working with it and see how it fits and see what kind of angles and stuff that I'd like to get for the tube. So with the piece of stainless that I ended up getting, it's about 36 inches long. Um, the ones on the Snap-on uh, kit, they're only about, I think, outside of the handle, about six to nine inches long. So this one, uh, we're gonna be measuring here. We've got the size of the handle. And then I really would like on the larger handle one, I'd like to have a curved piece actually. So that's something that the kit does not have. It's something that has a uh, the curved uh, end to it so I can get through the firewall. And usually right when you come out of the firewall, you've got like the brake booster or something right there. Plus you're working underneath the dash. So having it be able to curve around to where you actually need it in the engine bay will be pretty nice. So we'll get this one cut in about half and then we'll put a little bit of a curve to this one as well. When we cut it, we're gonna cut it at like a 45 degree angle just to have a nice tip to it also. There we are guys, nice little angle to that one. So I think we'll take that one over to the grinder then, uh, grind it down a little bit, give it a little bit of a, more of an angle. I think more than a 45 will probably be what I'm looking for. Maybe like a, you know, 65 degree angle right on there. And then uh, we'll get this thing bent a little bit. Adjust it up here a little bit. go. Just clean this one up just a hair. And there we are. We've got it seated down in there just inside of our bevel quite nicely. And we've got the handle right here. Now, like I said, for this larger one, I want to put a bit of a curve to it. We want to get uh, I'd like to come about 45 degrees out on this one. So we'll get this one. It is, you know, it is stainless, but yes, it is still malleable enough where I think we can bend it across what we want, but also being rigid enough to be able to get into the places we want to and not bend again for us either. Just so happen to have between here and uh, the edge of our bench is a nice rounded surface. So we're going to kind of put this one in here and see what kind of a twist we can do on this one. and check that out. Nice, even little bend. So when we're getting up into the dash, we're able to get that through, put it up into where we want to. And if later on that's not enough of a bend, you know, I can always bend it a little bit more. So I think that turned out pretty bad ice, if I do say so myself. So now with the smaller one, we're gonna get that one drilled out. And I think I'm just gonna do a slightly shorter version with just a straight tip to that one. There 
There we go. Now, like I said, on this one, I like to have it a little bit shorter, have it about a uh, six, seven inch version of it. So I think we're gonna cut this side down to uh, right about, eh, maybe eight inch one, right about that length. We'll get that one trimmed down now. There we go, we'll get that one trimmed off here and then get that one put into the handle too. There, get our excess kind of wiped out of here. Yay, fingers sticky for days. There we are, all cleaned up. We got the bevel put in on that side. Nice end on there. We got about an eight, nine inch end to that one. Now, like I said, these, I did a 45 degree angle at, but our grinder here at work kind of sucks the fat one. So I think I'm gonna go home later tonight and we'll get these ground at about a 65 where our grinder can actually get to be a, uh, you know, nice even stone to be able to get that one in there. But we'll do some close ups here. And I think this turned out pretty damn nifty. If I do say so myself, these will end up working really great. not that hard of a build for this one and in all the materials and everything we're at like right around half the cost of what it would be to get that kit it'd be even less if you guys go with non snap on handles which you definitely could do I'm sure you could pick up a couple of Harbor Freight or likewise uh, uh, screwdrivers just end up taking out the bit and using the handles for that one I'd recommend you use the uh, <clears throat> softer style grip ones just because they're easier to work with when you're using the drill bits and putting the bevels on it I mean you could use the harder ones but you know that's it is what it is the snap-on version they do have threaded ends to these that's why they're interchangeable but this one for the cost that we're going for I think this one turned out you know quite well you're able to get these right in through the dash take your wire put it in through the end and then put it right on here through the firewall, able to get to exactly the place that you guys need to get to. All right, well, that's about all I've got for you guys today. Now, in keeping with good faith on this one, we've got to pass it on to another YouTuber. And I couldn't think of anybody better than George over at Junk From Work. He is gonna be the one that I'm gonna call out for the Make Your Own Tool Challenge. Make sure you guys go over to his channel He's gonna have one up probably here in the next couple of weeks or so. Who knows? George always comes up with some pretty crazy off the wall things. I appreciate his channel and he does an awesome job. I'll leave the link for his down in the description as well as JRC54s who have called me out as well. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I appreciate everything that you've done for the channel. Make sure you stay tuned. We've got a lot more Duramax stuff coming up. The truck has still got the cab off right now, waiting on some parts, but we're gonna do an update video, I think this weekend, get you guys some updates to that one and uh, just keep you guys in the loop on that project. Appreciate it, thank you. And as always, you guys stay awesome.